Well, it's a pleasure to introduce our speaker this afternoon, Dr. Jonathan Gadidier. Uh, Jonathan received the PhD from the University of Burgundy, Bucconia, in France, and uh, from there went to Caltech, where he's been a postdoctoral fellow for the past three years in the group of Harry Atwater, a name with which many of you, I think, are familiar. And he's here today to tell us about work he did in which gain and loss combined in plasmonic uh, waveguides to produce beneficial effects. Thank you, Alexander, for this introduction. So I'm very pleased to be uh, here today. And uh, I'm going to talk about um, some work that, that was done uh, in the University of Burgundy in France, as well as in, the, in Caltech, in the Atwater group mo more recently. So I will talk today about uh, polymer metal plasmonic waveguides and its applications using uh, passive and active components for integrated photonics. So my name is uh, Jonathan Grandidier. And uh, let me first start by... Um, the introduction of my, of my talk. Um, I will first uh, start with the basics of a, a surface plasmon pariton and describe uh, uh, what, what is a surface plasmon and what, is, what are its interests um, in, uh, in, in optics. Then I will, I will uh, describe some theoretical and experimental work that was done to, to characterize surface plasmon pariton in in a uh, context of uh, telecommunication. And then I will show how we can go towards some on-chip optical system and integrated photonics using surface plasmon polariton. And um, one of the big uh, issues of, uh, of surface plasmon is the loss uh, that are induced by the, the metal, either uh, gold or silver. And I will talk here how to, uh, to compensate those loss, how to, to, uh, to surpass the, this problem of loss using some, some gain medium. Uh, here I will talk about uh, some quantum dots that, that, that I use to, to, uh, to compensate the loss in, in surface plasma. And finally, I will uh, conclude. So this is a the configuration that's called the kretschmann rater configuration, and it's the, uh, a very uh, standard way to excite a, a surface plasma polariton. So let me describe this structure. So we have here uh, a glass, uh, a glass substrate from where we have an incident wave coming, a plane wave or a, a Gaussian beam. Then we have a, a thin film uh, of metal. In this case, we would use gold and uh, a typical thickness would be uh, 50 nanometers. And then we have a dielectric. So uh, in this case, it's uh, about 500 nanometers and, and on top of that air. So as you could expect, when you have an incident beam coming from the, the glass substrate, uh, here I plotted the, the reflectivity. Most of the, of the light is reflected uh, from the from the metal uh, the, the metal, so here we are at a wavelength on 1.5 micron, uh, which is the telecommunication wavelength, and uh, this is important that we have a, a transverse magnetic a, a incident wave, which means that the 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 E field is in the direction of of the is in the incident plane. So when we increase the angle of incidence we can reach a point where the, the, the K vector of the incident wave is matching with the surface plasma at the interface of the metal and the, the dielectric. And through evanescent coupling uh, from the, the thin film uh, layer of gold, we can have an efficient coupling into the surface plasma uh, pariton wave. And you can see that from a, a theoretical point of view, this means that the reflection from the, the metal will be very, uh, very low. And, and uh, in this case, it, it attained uh, uh, 0.5. So, um, so we have here a propagating plasmon. 
but since the, the metal is, is very thin, we, we still are able to, to get some, some leakage radiation through the metal. And this leakage radiation will, will be important in the, in the next part of the talk because that's, that's what we will use mainly to, to image the, the surface plasma, to get the, the characteristic of the propagating surface plasma. So at this particular angle, we, we can get uh, uh, a plasma propagation, which is in this case at 59 degrees. And then when you further increase the angle, the, the coupling into the plasma disappears. And the, the reflectivity from the surface becomes one again. So if we look at the electric field in, the, in this structure, when we are at the surface plasma uh, polariton angle, here is the, the shape of the, of the E field uh, through the structure. So as you can see here, we have a very strong electric field right at the interface between the gold and the dielectric. And this is very characteristic to, to surface plasma pro propagation. However, if you are slightly off incidence, uh, either like in this case at 50 degrees or 70 degrees, all of the light is reflected and no, none of the uh, E-field is, is, uh, is seen uh, on the top surface. Another way to, to confirm that we, really, that we have a surface plasma pariton is when we look at the, the E-field intensity and at the, the direction of the E-field. Here I, I plotted some arrows that, that correspond to the, the direction of the electric field. And it is, uh, it is parallel at the highest point to the, to the, to the metal dielectric interface, which means that we have a collective oscillation of electrons and, uh, and photons, which is characteristic to the, the surface plasma pariton. And uh, as you can see on, on this field, this, this is a, a periodic oscillation, and this is propagating uh, at the interface between the gold and the, the the, the dielectric. So these kind of properties are, are of great interest for uh, integrated photonics since we were able to, to highly confine the light uh, in, the, in the lateral direction. So due to this, uh, th this is um, a schematic that was uh, uh, done by uh, Rashid Zia and Mark Bongersma. Uh, a few years ago that was initially presented in, in this review. And uh, as you can see, for, um, for optical communication, electronics can enable to, to, uh, to get a very uh, high miniaturization. And photonics can enable a very uh, high bandwidth and operating speed. And uh, given the, the, the confinement that can uh, give surface plasma per iton, uh, this schematic explained that we could, we could take advantage of, of both worlds, uh, the electronics and its miniaturization and the photonics with uh, the high operating speed to get another type of uh, electronic components and optical components which are based on plasmonic, get the bandwidth of photonics and the uh, miniaturization of electronics to, to, uh, to, to get some... Uh, some high-speed uh, optoelectronic opto components. And this is like 10 years ago in these reviews, we, we, we could see some uh, prospective uh, type of electronics using optical, on-chip optical, like, like you, can, you can see on this, uh, on this graph, as well as some, um, some integrated plasmonic circuitry with uh, electrical or, or thermal or optical modulation and routing and detection and excitation the same way we have for, uh, for electronics. So you, prob you are probably familiar with the, the Moore law that, uh, that dictates the, the number of, uh, of uh, transistors uh, that, that doubles every 18 months until now. So there was an adaptation of the Moore law uh, that was published in, in this journal, but for uh, adapted uh, only to, uh, to optical filters. And uh, the highest point that you see here is corresponding to some, uh, some, some, some V-groove uh, surface plasma uh, polariton uh, waveguide so that uh, 
that you are probably familiar here, and that, that was uh, 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 developed experimentally by uh, Sergei Bojevolny from, uh, uh, from Denmark, and it was published in, in, this, uh, in this paper uh, a few years ago. And uh, due to the, the, the confinement, we are able to, to have a, a lot of uh, optical components, and, uh, and, th and that's what this, this type of V-groove uh, uh, enables. So we have also other type of, of waveguide using plasmon. So here, th these are gold stripes uh, where we can have some, uh, some reflection. And here, what I will talk more today, these are some uh, dielectric loaded waveguides with, with resonators. So uh, again, that, that was uh, the, the, the perspective of, of plasmonic would be to, to do what electronic does, but at, on a wavelength scale. So uh, th this was uh, suggested uh, also about 10 years ago. At that time, no, none of this uh, existed. But the idea was to like, couple the light into some plasmonic wire and uh, uh, confine the light in order to get some, uh, some nonlinear medium, some, some coupling or sensors. And everything would be done at the, at the, the wavelength scale and, uh, and uh, with, with high bandwidth. And very recently, there was this, this issue of uh, MRS built-in, which uh, did a, a large review of the, the, the past 10 years on, on plasmonic and uh, optical communication using plasmonics. So this is the, the structure I'm, I'm going to, to detail to you today. So uh, it's called... Uh, a dielectric loaded surface plasmon polariton waveguide. Uh, we will shorten it by DLSPPW. And this is this type of structure. So we have uh, a substrate of glass on which we evaporate a thin layer of gold, uh, typically 50 nanometer. And on top of that, we, we spin coat some, uh, some PMMA and we pattern it in order to have a rectangular ridge that you can see here and uh, this will be our waveguide. The advantage of this type of structure made of, of PMMA is that uh, we, we, could, we could make some thermo-optics mod modulation. It's relatively easy to fabricate and low cost, at least for the, the PMMA. And uh, more importantly, we could uh, think of, of having some, uh, some active material to dope the, the polymer and to, to achieve some gain using the, the active, some active material. So this configuration was initially um, proposed by the group of uh, Joachim Krenn in, in Graz in Austria in 2006. And we will study here the, the, the characteristic of these waveguides at uh, 780 nanometer and 1.5 micron, which is the, the telecom wavelengths. So in order to analytically model this type of, uh, of structure, uh, we use the, the effective index model, which is uh, completely uh, uh, analytical. So the, the way the, this model works, so we have our final structure here, which is the, the dielectric ridge I, I just described. So the, the idea of the effective index model is to decompose this structure into two uh, uh, planar uh, structures. So the first one is the correspond to infinite, some infinite planes of the middle part of the structure of the ridge, with exactly the same thicknesses so you, that you can see here. And uh, the second structure is the the two parts that that are on each side of the of the ridge, and which are also composed of uh, of a planar structure that we can see here. And the, the great advantage of, of this uh, decomposition is, is that this type of structure is uh, relatively easy to analytically characterize, and there exists some, some uh, uh, analyt analytical solution, uh, mostly based on the transfer matrix method, to, to characterize this type of, uh, of structure. So we can determine uh, the, the effective index of the first structure, and the effective index of the second structure, and both, these, both of these effective index will, will raise to a third structure, uh, which will be artificial this time, 
and uh, the middle, the the refractive index of the middle structure will correspond to the effective index of, of this structure, and both sides will have an effective index of the of this structure, and we can consider that this structure, this uh, artificial structure, has the same characteristics as the the waveguide. This is of course an, an approximation because. Uh, doing, doing this uh, approximation, we don't consider the, the corner of the, of the, the ridge, and th this can induce some, some error, but this is a relatively good approximation, and we will compare it with some, uh, some uh, exact uh, uh, simulation models. So this is how I, I characterize this, this waveguide uh, at 1.5 micron, and using this, uh, this approximation, I could uh, I could determine the the I could calculate the E field in each layer, so in the in the first uh, multi-layer system, which is represented here, as well as the E field uh, in from this direction, and by making a, a convolution of both uh, characteristics, I could retrieve the the E field inside the the waveguide and the the shape of the mode, which is in the the, the DLSPPW. And uh, this, uh, this calculation, which was uh, relatively simple and straightforward, I compared it with some, um, some uh, numerical simulation that gave some exact solution. The first one is the, the differential method that was developed by uh, Yevgeny Popov and uh, Novier in, in Marseille. And the other one is, uh, was compared from the, the, the Green's function method. And both of them, of course, gave very uh, similar result, as well as similar result to the analytical model that, that I uh, showed here. So now in the, in the very near infrared at 718 nanometer, uh, we considered the, the same type of structure and did um, a figure of merit where we have uh, the, the width of the, of the waveguide and uh, as a function of the, we have the confinement factor as a function of the, the width of the waveguide. And uh, the optimal zone, which is uh, here, correspond to, of course, the highest confinement, where we can uh, expect a very high uh, miniaturization, so high confinement in the waveguide. But we should stay uh, single mode in order not to have some uh, uh, other mode. So, here, I, this small bar here represents the, the, the cutoff of the, the second mode. So in this zone, it means that we are a uh, single mode. We, our waveguide only, only supports uh, strictly a, a transverse magnetic uh, placement uh, mode, and, uh, which is very confined both laterally and, uh, and horizontally. Uh, which means in the waveguide. So the, this type of waveguide enable both confinement, the one that we have uh, uh, laterally and also from, from the side of the, the, the waveguide. So oh, this is for uh, uh, 780 nanometer. It's uh, uh, very near infrared. So uh, that's why actually at this wavelength, this was the optimal uh, size of the waveguide, 300 nanometer by 350. And uh, due to this very small uh, 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 length, the way we, we did to, the way I did to, to, uh, to fabricate it was to, to use E-beam lithography. So uh, I, I uh, spin coated some, some PMMA on the, on the gold surface. Then I, I used uh, E-beam pattern and uh, I, I developed it to, to get the, the ridge, and this is, this is what we get. We get a, a very thin uh, ridge uh, on top of a, a gold layer. And uh, here we have, um, we use a, a large zone, a taper, in order to, to launch the, the surface placement proton mode uh, using the, the Kretschmann rater configuration that I, uh, that I described earlier. So uh, due to the, the size of the, the waveguide that, that are uh, uh, on the order of hundreds of nanometers, we, we, we had to use the, the, the E-beam lithography. So um, 
in order to, to excite the, the surface plasmon mode, there is the, the, the method that, that, I, uh, that I described in detail uh, at the beginning of, the, of my talk, which is the, the Kretschmann writer configuration. And uh, so this is the, the first method that, uh, that we used. And there is another method which is quite uh, interesting too. It's, uh, it's the way to, uh, to uh, we have an incident wave from, from the top where we uh, carefully have a, a TM polarization, so the, the E field in the direction of the, of the waveguide. And um, either on the, on the border of the waveguide or on the defect from the waveguide, we will uh, have our incident beam. And this, this will create some, some scattered wave. So we will get some scattering and some uh, 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 in every direction. And some of the, the scattered light Will, if it will couple into the, will have a, the same k vector as the, as the surface plasmon polariton and will couple into the, the surface plasmon waveguide. So, of course, the, this method is, um, is not very efficient to, to couple the, the light, the incident light, but some of it will, will couple and we, we can use it to characterize our, uh, our waveguide. And since the, the met metal layer is thin, in both cases, we can we can get some leakage radiation from the from the bottom of the uh, substrate, which means that we are able to image in the in the far field using a CCD camera. We are able to image our uh, the, the leakage radiation, and this is the um, the experimental setup. So here we have uh, an excitation objective from the top. We excite uh, the surface plasma through a defect. And here we have some, an immersion oil setup with a high numerical aperture uh, objective. And in the far field, we can detect the, the signal both in the direct plane. And since we are in the far field, we can uh, apply some, some, uh, some uh, optics in order to have also the, to image the, the, the Fourier plane, the back focal plane, which also gives us some uh, uh, important information on the effective index of the of the waveguide. So this is how we we can ima image it. So this is I, I trace the this is the ray optic. So we get here the 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 propagation through the waveguide on our uh, CCD camera. If we uh, if we uh, if we add some uh, some lens, we have the same ray ray optic model, and we can get exactly the, the, same, uh, the same imaging of the waveguide. But the advantage of, of this setup that, that I uh, mounted is that when you remove the, if, if you adjust uh, all the lengths properly, when you remove one of them, you can get the, you can go directly from the direct space to the, the Fourier space and then get uh, a lot of information on the characteristic of the waveguide. So simply by, by uh, adding or removing uh, a lens, we can, we can switch from both direct and, and back focal plane. And uh, the great advantage of, of doing this is that we, we just need one camera. And uh, also, we, we, we can be sure that uh, the characteristic, what we see in the back focal plane, is really corresponding to what we see in the direct plane. So then I, we, we did using. Um, some uh, simulation model using the differential method, some calculations, and we compared it for the, 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 the waveguide that, that I described. We, we compared both uh, simulations and uh, experiments. So as you can see here, we have uh, the, the, what we see here corresponds to the, the direct excitation from the uh, top objective. And uh, the, the, lines that we, the line that we see here, the, the straight line, at an effective index of uh, 1.26, correspond to the excitation of the, the mode inside the, the, the ridge. And we could reproduce it with, uh, with uh, we could have a quite uh, good agreement with the, the simulation, both in the Fourier plane and in the direct plane. So. Um, so we got a, a propagation length of about six micron, which is uh, relatively low. But this is the, the characteristic of uh, of such uh, such waveguide at uh, 
uh, at this type of, uh, of wavelength here, 718 nanometer. But again, we got uh, a good agreement for, for this waveguide using the differential method uh, simulation technique and uh, in, the, in the direct space uh, using the, the far field leakage radiations. And finally, we, I did a, a parametric uh, analysis using uh, uh, varying the, the excitation wavelengths of the, of the laser from uh, 740 to 900 nanometer. And while we were uh, increasing the, the wavelength, the, the losses uh, in the metal were decreasing, and we could show that the propagation lengths uh, increased uh, from about uh, uh, 4 micron at 750 nanometer to uh, about 11 micron propagation at, uh, at 900 nanometer. So um, here we only show the propagation length, but uh, while we increase the wavelength, we also decrease the confinement. So there is a, a trade-off to find between having a, a low propagation length and uh, a high confinement. So in order to, to integrate this type of, uh, of waveguide into some uh, uh, optoelectronic circuitry, I did another analysis which uh, consists of using uh, still our, our uh, uh, dielectric loaded surface Poisson waveguide, but this time uh, using a finite width metal stripe to, to integrate the whole structure into some uh, uh, opto optoelectronic circuitry. And uh, in this case, now we will switch from the uh, optical wavelengths, uh, 780 nanometer, to telecom wavelengths. So here we will work at uh, 1.5 micron. And uh, because that in this uh, in, in this regime, the the optimal optimal size to get the highest confinement uh, is 600 nanometer, we were able to fabricate those waveguides by UV photolithography. So here is the, um, the different steps I used to, for the fabrication. So I first, uh, since we have uh, two, two uh, ridge, we had to use a two-step UV photolithography. So with the first uh, mask aligner, I could uh, create a void here on which I, I evaporated gold to have a, a, a finite width uh, ridge of gold. Then I developed to get only the ridge of gold, and then spin-coated PMMA. And this was the, the most critical part, which was to, to align, uh, using a mask aligner, the second uh, ridge in the middle of, the, of the, the gold stripe to finally develop and get this type of final structure where I have um, uh, a PMMA ridge on a, on a gold uh, uh, stripe. And this is the, the type of, of image uh, uh, I, I got from, from uh, scanning electron microscopy. So you can see here the, the width of the gold is, uh, is uh, uh, 2.75 micron. And uh, we have the ridge of a PMMA, which is perfectly aligned. And we could go as slow, as low as uh, 1 micron to, and still get a very well aligned uh, ridge of, of PMMA. So uh, this is the uh, atomic force microscopy image that, that could give us the, uh, a good characterization of the, of the topography of the, of the structure. And finally, I did the, the characterization. Uh, so I, I, I calculated uh, analytically and, uh, uh, sorry, I calculated with, with the differential method and the green function method, uh, the propagation lengths of this structure for varying uh, metal stripes, varying widths of, of metal stripes. And I also did uh, uh, the, experiment, the experimental characterization uh, by varying the, the widths of the metal stripe from one micron to, to four microns. And uh, what, what I could see by doing this, this analysis is that both uh, theoretically and uh, experimentally, we got uh, a point uh, for which the, um, when, we, when we were reducing the, the metal stripe width, we had a significant 
uh, decrease in the, the propagation length, meaning that the, the mode uh, when the, the reach the, the, the reach was the, the stripe was too too narrow, meaning that we, we the, the confinement was not enough to to uh, to, uh, to not to see the, the border of the metal stripe, and uh, we induced some loss due to the, the corner of the the gold stripe, and we concluded from this analysis that at uh, around 2.25 uh, micron, we could get the same uh, propagation length that we would get from an infinite uh, uh, film of gold, uh, meaning that that um, that this point was the for us the optimal uh, width of gold to uh, to to have uh, this type of structure uh, for uh, integrated photonics. So now toward uh, further integration and uh, on-ship optical system. So I could show here that, I mean, uh, optical system on a chip uh, would be smaller and, and uh, yeah, especially smaller than, than free space design. And uh, plasmonic can, can have an important role in, in sensing and uh, in active switching, as I described at the beginning of, of my talk. However, for uh, integrated photonic, the, the emerging technology is silicon on, on insulator, which is the, the standard uh, photonic platform. So the question we will ask ourselves now is can we efficiently integrate a uh, useful plasmonic device with low-loss silicon on insulator uh, photonic networks and have this type of, uh, of structure where we have a, a, a silicon photonic waveguide that could uh, easily interconnect with some plasmonic waveguide where we could do the, the switching operation more uh, efficiently. So when we asked ourselves the, this question, we looked at um, a standard uh, silicon waveguide at uh, 1.5 micron and the shape of the, the mode. And we looked at, at the silicon waveguide, the plasmonic waveguide that we have been working so far. And uh, it actually appeared that the, the, the mode profile uh, were quite uh, close and uh, uh, we saw that there would be a way to, to get uh, some efficient coupling between the plasmonic waveguide and the, the, the silicon waveguide, the traditional uh, silicon waveguide. So that's when we superpose both uh, mode profile from the silicon waveguide and the plasmonic waveguide. And uh, we can see that there is uh, some high confinement in both that could be used to, uh, to have an efficient coupler. So when we further analyzed uh, this type of structure, so when we vary the, the wavelengths for the, the plasmonic waveguide, so at 1.5 micron, the, the size around 500 by 500 nanometer is uh, strictly monomodal and support only uh, surface plasma uh, mode at the interface of the gold and the PMMA. But when you go uh, below, at uh, like from, from 1.3 micron, there is a cutoff where it also supports a dielectric mode. So that's why we, we, we can confirm that at 1.5 micron, we we are strictly monomodal and support only uh, a plasma mode. And what we did, we fabricated those type of, uh, of waveguide uh, integrated into uh, silicon photonics. And uh, we could realize a, a coupling between the silicon photonics and uh, the surface plasma waveguide and coupled back into the, the, the silicon waveguide for, for characterization. So the way we, we coupled initially on the silicon waveguide was uh, through grating coupling, and the way we coupled back to free space was also through grating coupling. And we can see here that when we we uh, increase the length of the um, of the uh, of the gold, we can see that we uh, also uh, decrease the, the transmission, which means we we uh, increase the loss uh, inside the plasmonic waveguide when we have a longer waveguide. And to confirm that we, we really had uh, uh, some, uh, some plasmonic uh, transmission, we turned the polarization and verified that in a T polarization, no, none of the, the signal was transmitted. So this was a, 
a very uh, nice uh, check that we really uh, transmitted light from a photonic waveguide to an other photonic waveguide through a plasmonic waveguide. And um, this result was confirmed with a, a FDTD simulation, finite difference time domain simulation using a numerical commercial software. And uh, by knowing the loss in the metal and uh, the loss uh, induced by the surface plasma, we could calculate the transmission loss between the photonic waveguide and the plasmonic waveguide and, uh, and came to the conclusion that uh, we had only one dB per transition and which correspond to 80% of the signal that is transmitted between the photonic waveguide and the uh, plasmonic waveguide. And uh, this is so far the, the highest uh, reported value for uh, uh, coupling light into a, a plasmonic waveguide. And this, is, this was uh, reported in this in nanolator in 2010. So now I'm going to, uh, to switch to the, the last part of, of my talk, uh, which uh, correspond to having some gain into a, a plasmonic waveguide. So um, here we did a, a very simple uh, experiment. We, we doped uh, some uh, PMMA with uh, quantum dots uh, that were emitting at 620 nanometer. So um, using the same setup that I described earlier, we excite with a, a green laser through the Kretschmann rater configuration, a surface plasmon at the interface of the silver and the, the PMMA. So we have a, a green surface plasmon at 532 nanometer. And uh, we can see in the, the Fourier plane that by uh, a green surface plasmon excitation, we can get some, uh, we can excite the, the quantum dots that will emit into, uh, into a red surface plasmon here at about 620 nanometer. And the reason why the width of the, the ring is uh, large is due to the, 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 the broadband uh, emission of the quantum dots, uh, which is not exactly at 620, but more or less uh, around this value. And then we I realized um, a wide, uh, a wide uh, uh, ridge, which is multimodal, which supports uh, a lot of modes. And here is an uh, atomic force microscopy image. And as you can see, uh, the problem with silver was that it's very rough. And uh, the roughness would induce uh, uh, several losses. But nevertheless, we could have a very good agreement between uh, theory and experiment where we could see all those lines in the, the Fourier plane that correspond to all the modes excited from the, the quantum dots to the, the waveguide modes of the, of the ridge, and uh, including the fundamental TM00 mode, which is the fundamental plasmonic mode, uh, which can be seen here. Then we, we uh, in order to get some, some gain at, at telecom wavelengths, we, we bought some... Uh, some quantum dots from the, the company Evident Technologies. And the characteristic of these quantum dots is that they, they absorb very high in the visible, and they emit exactly at 1.52 micron, so very close to the, the telecom wavelengths. So we doped some, uh, some PMMA ridge with those quantum dots, uh, and we used uh, a thin ridge that we could use in order to have a single mode plasmonic waveguide. So this is the, the type of structure that we are considering now. So we have a gold layer and a ridge, a plasmonic ridge with quantum dots, dot with quantum dots on top, emitting at uh, 1.2 micron. So as a first experiment, we, I just uh, uh, had a, a green laser to, uh, to, to pump the quantum dots and to, uh, to excite the quantum dots. And I verified in the direct space that through excitation of these quantum dots in the middle of the ridge, we had the propagation uh, in both directions. And uh, this propagation was corresponding to a single mode uh, surface plasma inside the, the, the waveguide ridge due, due to coupled emission of the, the quantum dots into the, the dielectric loaded surface plasma polariton waveguide. 
And uh, in order to verify also the, the spontaneous emission of the, the quantum dots, I increased, uh, I, I used a, a large beam, a large green laser beam to pump the quantum dot. And I verified that by increasing the pump irradiance from zero to 1,000 uh, watt per centimeter square, I could get a linear uh, in, uh, in average intensity over the, um, the quantum dots uh, emission. So this is the, the image in the far field that we record from the leakage radiation. And finally, uh, I excited this mode from, uh, from the, the, uh, the, the border of the taper, so I could get uh, diffractive coupling into the, the ridge here. So this is the, the type of uh, uh, exponential decay we get uh, from the, the propagation lengths around the ridge. And here we have a propagation length of 13.5 uh, micron. So we excite the plasma mode, which couple into the, the, the ridge, and we get this decay, 13.5 micron. And then when we pump uh, the quantum dots, what we see is that at the beginning of the pump irradiance, until 500 uh, watt per centimeter square, we, we, we don't get any improvement of the propagation length. And then there is a threshold at 500 where we get some uh, stimulated emission of quantum dots. And uh, this creates some, some gain into the, the media. And we get up to 27% uh, increase in the, in the propagation length. So this was the setup where I have an initial laser that excites the, the, the ridge. And uh, from the, the side, I have a second laser which is uh, slightly unfocused to get, uh, to excite the whole, uh, all the quantum dust from the, from the ridge. So uh, in order to verify that we really had a simulated emission, we made a similar analysis in the, in the Fourier plane so um, using a, a very long distance, uh, a very long focal distance uh, lens, we could uh, record the, the cross-section of the, of the waveguide mode in the Fourier plane, which, uh, has a, which correspond to a, uh, which can be approximated by, by a Lorentzian. And from, uh, from the, the value uh, one of the parameters of the Lorentzian can give us the, the propagation length. And here we retrieve the very close value of 13.7 uh, micron, uh, we, which corresponds to the value we measured in, in the direct space. And when we increase the pump irradiance, at the same threshold approximately, we could get uh, a decrease in the full width at half maximum of the of the uh, of the Laurentian, which were uh, uh, verifying that we really had some uh, preferential emission at the, the middle wavelengths, which was the excitation wavelengths. So we could verify that way that we had some uh, uh, pro propagation length increase due to stimulated emission of quantum dots. And finally, in order to, to do a more theoretical approach, we, uh, we calculated to, to what this, um, uh, this increase, which gain it would correspond to using this, this uh, equation. And uh, we, uh, we put in parallel the pump irradiant and the uh, imaginary part of the dielectric constant of the, the PMMA. And this is the, the maximum value that we reached. And by knowing uh, some of the parameter of the, the quantum dots, uh, for example, the absorption cross-section and uh, the, the density of quantum dots per, uh, per volume, we could fit our curve and uh, get a value for the emission cross-section of the, the quantum dots, here 3, 10 to the minus 15 centimeters square, which, which uh, was a, a reasonable value for the emission cross-section of the, the quantum dots. So this brings me to the, the end of my talk. So I could show today uh, some, um, some uh, 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 work that was done to, towards the realization of a plasmonic waveguide supporting a, a very confined mode. Then I showed you some uh, plasmonic waveguide on, on a finite width gold stripe 
for integrated photonics with efficient coupling between uh, photonic and plasmonic waveguides. And finally, I uh, demonstrated some optical gain by stimulated emission of surface plasmon pariton. So I would like to acknowledge my uh, uh, funding at Caltech uh, from the EFRC and the Department of Energy, uh, Professor Atwater, and uh, Dr. Ryan Briggs, which uh, uh, worked with me on the, on the coupling between the, the photonic and the plasmonic waveguide. And finally, I would like also to thank the, the European Commission and the Plasmocom project, my uh, thesis advisor, Professor Alain Dereux, the co-advisor, Professor Gérard collat Defranc, and uh, the coordinator of the project, Professor Anatoly Zayats, and uh, Professor Sergei Bojevolny for uh, discussions. And thank you for your attention.